All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, currently, the score in the Chrysalis 3.5 match is one to one, and uh, so far, uh, first map was in Chrysalis's favor. And uh, I think something interesting to keep in mind is that um, it was those kind of closer maps, right? You have the Shrine, and you have. Um, village as well on nepal where the zarya composition with the lucio uh really favored chrysalis but i can well especially that second point that more those more open areas they those definitely favored three uh 3.5 way more uh warrior went for the flanks uh with kukla batera on the mercy right and you, you get the mercy pocket on a really strong angle and a really strong flank um maybe like more open maps are the solution um to 3.5 struggles against the lucio yeah, definitely. If you can play those more open maps where it's not as easy for a Lucio comp to rush on you, that's going to put the advantage a little bit more in your favor. They've shown for 3.5 that they definitely like the Mercy, and it's a comfort thing for them. So they clearly practice around this Mercy comp quite a bit. And, you know, we're going to probably see them play more poke stuff tonight than we will rush, because without that Lucio, they're not going to be able to be able to match the rush but here we're going to what's our next map we're going to circuit so with circuit this, hmm. you can play this way more pokey which is definitely favorable here for a mercy comp yeah absolutely um it's interesting that chrysalis chose this map considering 3.5 um opting out of the lucio right you'd think chrysalis would want to um throw 3.5 in an uncomfortable position right uh with a map that's less like open uh, but we'll we'll see. Uh, maybe we'll see Widowmaker come out from Chrysalis or some other other pick. That's very difficult uh, for three point five to deal with. So we we don't know what Chrysalis really has up their sleeves yet. Yeah, the issue here is the map pool for the playoffs as far as escort goes. It's all open. It's Dorado, Junkertown, and Circuit. Uh, like pick your poison yeah. there. For sure. Like there's like they're all options that are going to more heavily favor poke. So, absolutely. We might even see um, this match really come down to push, right? Because uh, I expect uh, Chrysalis to perform very, very well in push. You, the Lucio is very strong. Might even see Kiriko uh, on push, just because of how dominant Kiriko is on most push maps, especially Esperanka. Uh, but we'll have to see for now. Um, we also haven't really seen the Sigma uh, from either... Uh, I believe our two tank players, or we might have a swap coming in for 3.52 on the tank. We'll see. Yeah, we already have the swap already made. Cherub, Cherub seems has to be been out. swapped out for Mr. Box. All right. Mr. Box, it looks like, if I check out their profile, it looks like they play a little bit of everything. They play D.Va, they play Zarya, they play Junker Queen. I would... Love to see some Junker Queen at some point, so... Axum is also out, so we might see tank players... Uh, we're, we're going to see tank players different. Uh, oh, yeah. Sides. So it's going to be oh, a yeah. new duel here. Yeah, this might be just more of they need to get their second tank player, their map in, so... You know? The, well, also, a good time I mean, to do Sigma, it. Right? We haven't seen the Sigma from Cherub or Axum. Um, maybe both teams are relying on a Sigma, even Ball. You can run ball in this map too, oh, or Winston. Like there's there, there's uh, there's uh, less like normalized uh, options as well. Like you can run the Winston on attack here, uh, like run down that first point. So many options, but it looks like straight off the bat the Winston is locked by both sides, at least in the spawn rooms. Yeah, from Chrysalis here on the defense, we're gonna see more of a standard. Sometimes you can swap the Hanzo out. For something else, I've seen teams that'll run Sojourn as a second sniper. They'll run Genji if they want to just be able to poke and then go in. But they're going to opt for the Hanzo here. For 3-5, this is kind of interesting. They're opting for Genji Reaper. So more Brawly DPS here. It's gonna whereas be they want to poke. Yeah. It's going to be difficult for Thesus and Warrior to kind of take space. Without and, a tank that can mirror that aggression. And running the Ana here instead of the BAP is going to limit their ability to pressure out the shield from Chrysalis. 
All right, round starts. Looks like Kukubatera is going to focus on um, kind of getting the damage boost out on the Warrior, at least uh, probably when he goes in. And so far, nothing from either team. Uh, Hanzuki's very stacked on the team, not really looking for a very unique angle, playing very safe. CTW finds one straight off the bat, though. Thesius falls. Yeah, that's a nice opening pick right there, as it's going to kind of force 3.5 to either play a little bit safe or to back off almost entirely. Epoch kind of trapped into a bad spot here. Absolutely. Uh, Lord just barely surviving. And 3.5 actually have a bit of pressure here, right? And I think once 3.5 close the distance, they actually, like, they, they can do something. So it's really up to the DPS and support line of uh, Chrysalis almost to split, right? They want to be separate because uh, the Genji has to close space. The Reaper has to close space. Hanzuki finds Epoch, though. Massive pick, and that's just going to force 3.5 the whole way back. 3.5 can't take any space without Mr. Box. Yeah, Chrysalis get Not gave Mr. up Box, the high sorry. ground there to 3.5. <laughs> And Epoch, when he took the high ground, he was in a very advantageous position right there, able to just rain down those hyperspheres. But then for some reason, like, despite them still being at an angle that he could drop them down on them, he dropped to the low ground and ended up taking a couple of shots to the head from Hanzuki. For sure, Hanzuki looking for an angle under the bridge. Doesn't really find anything. The Discord orb uh, from Anu is really just focused on Epoch. Epoch looking for the flux, though. It's going to be first ultimate of the map. The Rock misses, finds Anu as well, and this might be a fight win. The Rock is massive. Uh, Epoch just pushing past that window. The window from C2W really, uh, nothing's going through. Just focusing on that freaking Hanzo duel between Thesis and Lord. I was trying to see which of those two was going to get the one up. I wanted to see the Hanzo death, but Warrior kind of interfered there. But does manage to clear the pick. I'm just now actually noticing that Thesis is on DPS now. He was their flex support for the first two maps. Yeah, and what, what I find interesting is that Warrior has actually built the blade before Jayalai has built the nano. Uh, and th this is quite uncommon because nano is just su such a uh, fast building ultimate, and that really shows how the fights that Chrysalis did win, they were very uh, fast fights. So not a lot of healing actually was able to be done. The flux coming out from Mr. Box, the rock just barely misses. Thusus falls, and now uh, uh, 3.5 really need a response, and here it is. Yep, the blade, co blade coming out as Warriors slashing, dashing, and chopping in half the Chrysalis team. Warrior does fall, but the damage has been done. Finding three. Uh, Anu did not have the chance to actually pull out the Transcendence, it was perfectly timed. And Jaila hasn't even pulled out the Nano, right? Uh, you have you have Nano on the side of 3.5, uh, and then the pressure from the Dragon as well, right? 3.5 just have all the space in the world. Yeah, the Dragon there on Mr. Box got him so low, they weren't able to actually get him topped up there. Oh. Hazuki gets two. Wait, Chrysalis might be able to flip this back in their favor as 3.5 is going to back up a little bit. Yeah. Chrysalis managed to find two picks, uh, Hanzuki on the Ash, before the Nano can even be utilized, and we've kind of seen this a lot from 3.5, right? Where um, a fight's really going in their favor, they're confident they can win the fight, and they don't commit more ultimates, and they end up getting cut out, right? You saw it in Eichenwald, you saw it in Nepal, and we're kind of seeing it again here. Yeah. During the... During that time, though, as 3.5 was backing up, Hanzuki had gotten another pick on the Jailai. I'm going to assume that's how you pronounce it. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. But that pick onto the Ana forces them to wait even longer. He bought another 10 seconds while they were still regrouping. There's the Flux and the Nano, although Nano Flux actually isn't that great because uh, during the Flux animation you actually can't do any damage and also you're kind of stacking those two on ultimates and it's just all dealt with with one Transcendence, one ultimate, right? So that's one ultimate for two, not a really good trade for uh, 3.5. And now uh, Mr. Box is also on the D.Va, which is really interesting, right? Because I, I, you think about it, uh, 3.5's composition doesn't really lend itself to a ton of range damage so you don't need the sigma shield oh mercy mercy's probably gonna get staggered here they just gotta hit the shots mercy does manage to get away they aren't able to finish the kill on her jailai is gonna swap to moira kind of we a questionable this. pick yeah we saw this earlier on nepal village really didn't work out that well uh for 3.5 
and this is probably one of the most challenging points to take, right? And but you really only have a few options to get, and you have like that far right, you have under. Um, but it looks like um, Crystals are playing this slow, they're just giving space, playing for Lord and Henzuki, and the Bob is going to go out, and it's, it's a very, a very strong placement. The Coach Gun, though, wow! The Coach Gun uh, from Thesus is just going to knock Henzuki's Bob off the map. He's not going to do anything. Warrior comes in with the blade. The immortality's down. There's really nothing to deal with. Anu falls as well. Doesn't have the transcendence. He finds another. And that's going to be fight for 3.5. If they're smart, they can stagger this baby diva out. But as she makes her way to the cart, Epoch is just going to end her misery and send her back to the spawn room. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that second point uh, for 3.5. This feels very similar to the pacing of the Iconvall game, although 3.5 are a little more dominant this time, not really bring, uh, bringing it to overtime. They can just kind of roll through pretty comfortably in Hanzuki. That was just a little bit too aggressive there. Yeah, I like, I appreciate the effort trying to go aggro there, Hanzuki, but unfortunately you do pay for your light. Chrysalis is going to have to back off, and we're going to see even more cart push for 3.5 out of it. This is again another challenging high ground you have to deal with, um, and many teams fall into the trap of like, oh, we need to push cart through, and you don't take the high ground, and you end up losing because it just feels impossible, right? And there's one minute and thirty seconds on the clock, so 3.5 are really under pressure to get this cart through. So who are they, who are they going to leave on cart, right? Maybe leave Warrior on cart and have the rest of the team push high, because you see that this is the issue, right? Uh, Lord comes in with the overclock, and uh, oh wow, the headshot of the epoch, excellent work. Uh, Mercy just trying to live on cart. Oh, it's, they're gonna stagger oh, they're gonna, this Mercy no, out. Very don't, smart don't do here this from Crystal. Uh, uh, don't, don't do this. Don't. Oh, okay. okay. The nice stagger there from Chrysalis. That buys them easily another 20 to 30 seconds right there because now they have to wait for their Mercy to spawn and walk back with her. 3.5 better go for the high ground this fight. I understand that you need to contest the point, but. You need to take the high ground from Lord Hanzuki. Um, like, what you're probably going to see here, if uh, 3.5 just opt to go main, the window from C2W is just going to it's gonna be too much pressure. They're not going to be able to push it the whole way through. Yeah, the pressure here from that high ground, the spam from Lord and Hanzuki, along with the supports, there's so much damage here. And if they do try to push Ooh, it through, bomb. Mr. Box can just drop and touch the cart. The blade. Coming There's the Moria. blade, but uh, Anu once again just negating the uh, the blade from Warrior. Although the last two blades, Warrior actually was like kind of off time with Anu's trance, so he's able to get it off. Uh, Epoch with the flux onto Anu. This is still a very even fight, and the spawn here is very difficult to deal with. Mr. Box needs to fall though before the the crush comes through. Hanzuki has the visor though, taking a very aggressive mid angle. They deal with them very quickly though, and this cart is getting awfully close. Anu falls, it's only up to CTW, uh, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, very nice push there from 3.5 to cap in overtime. Like, even though they didn't finish with anything on the time bank, it doesn't matter. On Escort, if you cap at all, you give yourself a significant advantage here, especially on Circuit Royale, where third point is really difficult to take. Absolutely. And... I believe this th this first point is going to be very definitive in what the, the rest of the map is going to look like. And where, you know, you have these really kind of hard corners, right? And if 3.5 play this right, they can kind of play the Reaper or whatever they want to play, like kind of the close range heroes if they want to try that again. And for Chrysalis to push up and move the cart, they're basically forced to close the distance, right? So they have some sort of focus, and we're going to see Warrior on the Genji again. A very strong pick, and Jailao is going to straight off the bat just lock the Moira. Uh, Mr. Box may be going with the Zarya, which it's it's optimal in some cases, and considering that there's not a lot of like ranged options uh, on the side of 3.5, and you don't really need to deal with a Widowmaker or anything, the Zarya might be effective. It's kind of interesting also here to see CTW going for this Onik here over the Baptiste, just because... Well, as I say that, I just noticed they swapped. Um, there it is. Typically, yeah. <laughs> well, looking, looking at their profile, though, they do play a lot of Ana, so it wouldn't surprise me to see them try to work some Ana comps in. Kind of a standard comp here, but not for Circuit Royale. This is really weird on Circuit. Absolutely. And this is going to make Warrior's life a lot more difficult, right? Because Anu's able to build that beat fast enough 
every single one of Warrior's Blades are going to go down the drain. And really, 3.5 relies on those blades so much to win each of these fights. Mr. Box already taking a lot of space. The boop onto Epoch. Epoch apparently gets out of that, right? And uh, Theseus falls. Just the absolute pressure from the Zarya. Uh, 3.5 need to kite this quick, try and recover. Otherwise, this uh, first point is just going to be a roll. Yeah, Mr. Box almost losing his life there, doing a good job to duck behind the car to be able to survive just long enough for CTW to be able to heal them back up. Coco Patch is still in the fight, it's now back to a 5v5 situation. Epoch just doesn't have the same pressure that Mr. Box has. It's very difficult to have any purchase. Theseus finds C uh, CTW and Anu falls right behind it. Mr. Box doesn't have any healing, anything to deal with, and that's going to be a fight win for 3.5 with 2 minutes and 50 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, here it is going to be difficult for Lord to be able to actually go on somebody because your mercy. Normally, as a Genji, you're going to want to target the supports, but you look at Jalai, he's on Moira. He's going to have Fade, he's going to be able to suck on you. Uh, that sounded incredibly wrong, but for Geek, oh, you, all no. know, you all know what I meant. <laughs> but either way, it's going to be a difficult to dive. And then if you fly at Mercy, go at Mercy, she can just fly wow. away. Lord taking a rail immediately onto Lord, and that's that's really impactful, right? Because now, uh, if if you look on the side of 3.5, Anu only has one beat, right? Like there's only one defensive ultimate on the side of uh, Chrysalis, but you have the the flux from Epoch and the blade from Warrior, and if they don't stack these ultimates, I, I don't know. Chrysalis are kind of screwed going into this next fight, right? Uh, possible. Possibly. It's going to be a matter of just how well they can take this. They can use the window to try to be able to force some pressure. As they use the disruptor to be able to just buy themselves a few seconds to push. The OC coming out from Hanzuki. The flux! The flux is massive though. The beat comes out. Hanzuki finds two though. Hanzuki really carrying this fight. And it's a bit of an even fight so far. Uh, Hanzuki just barely holding on. And uh, the immortality field from CTW going down. Epoch just barely holding on. Mr. Box in there trying to take out uh, Theseus. Theseus lives though barely uh, due to Kukula Petra, uh, Coco Leo Petra. That is very difficult to say. Mr. Box finds the blade and then the Grav Blade combo. Theseus falls. Very chaotic fight. Yeah, very chaotic. Coco though, on that Valkyrie, was just able to completely keep her team up. Like, they were t spending their time trying to kill the Sigma, but problem is. Sigma is very difficult to kill on his own, but if you have a Valking Mercy with that heal beam on him 24-7, unless your coordination is perfect, you are going to struggle to kill him. Absolutely. And you, you can almost think of um, Chrysalis's composition here. It's like a revving motor, right? Like, it, it starts it starts kind of quiet, and as that charge builds for Mr. Box, gets louder and louder and louder, and that, that's what that fight looked like, right? Like, just barely holding on with the heels on the side of 3.5, trying to keep up the pressure, trying to keep contesting the cart. Um, but it's just it's so difficult for Epoch, right? Because, you know, although in that neutral, although when the zero charge... Uh, with Mr. Box, like, Epoch can get a lot of value the second that charge goes up. Like, you're seeing now, Mr. Box just has all the pressure, all the space in the world. Ooh, Epoch, Epoch finding finds kill one him. already, though. Theseus finds another. It seems like Chrysalis got a little ahead of themselves. Theseus finds a headshot on the Lord. And this is going to be a fight win for 3.5 and a bit of a poor position now for Chrysalis because no ultimates, really, except for that uh, window. And how do you position the window here, right? 3.5, if they control that high ground, you really just need to make a very committal swing. But can you do that? Like, you look at 3.5, look at their ultimate bank. Yeah, this is a massive ultimate bank here for 3.5. The fact that they won that fight without oh. committing and with CTW dead, that's another fight gone already for Chrysalis. They can't Absolutely. fight this without their bat. Yeah, the Baptiste is gone. I'm not sure if the Flux was needed, but it goes out. And no kills from that. Uh, CTW is going to be getting back into the fight soon. Mr. Box kind of dropping low. Crystals are playing this a bit risky, getting a bit ahead of themselves. The Blade from uh, from uh, Warrior is going to get deflected by Anu with the beat. And this fight so far is just its chaotic. It's at this corner around this pole. The window from CTW is going to continue to apply pressure, but to deflect actually from Warrior. Uh, that was excellent. Yeah, right there, Thesis does fall at the end, but not before they get two during that fight. And they're gonna be a rest up anyway, so it doesn't even matter. It's all in vain as Lord dies at the end to the chasing Jailai. Um, looking at the alts here, we do have Blade, but it's gonna be really difficult to 
get anything out of the blade here as the coalescence is on for fragile they can just cold to try to not only sustain through but also to be able to just eliminate the genji for sure but there's no baptiste there's no lucio beat so this is really lord's chance to carry it out and this is going to be the most impactful fight here oh lord finds two Looking yep, for Lord. a third, the Coalescence has popped in an effort to keep this fight going on the side of 3.5, but Lord just plays it safe, plays it slow, has the advantage already, just gonna play off of that, not gonna feed. Mr. Yeah, Box Lord. looking for some space, doesn't really have a lot of charge though. Yeah, Lord's initial dash getting two was huge there, but the Coalescence forcing him to back off as Epoch gets one. A grab here. There it is! Grab finds four, Lord's right behind him, looking for anything, trying to live, gets Thesus! And gets out. That's going to be really, really big on the side of uh, Chrysalis, but the four man flux. Immortality comes out. Chrysalis trying to keep this going. Lord finds Shilalai. It's really big. It's only Coco. Uh, up, uh, it's up to Coco now to heal up the rest of 3.5. Trying to keep this fight going. CTW brings down the window. Takes down Nipok. Take down Coco. Lord takes down Thesus, and that's going to be second point. Yeah, the late blade coming out there from Warrior. Problem is, at that point, they were pretty much down everyone. Ana answered with the beat, but I really don't feel like the beat was needed. They were so far up in the fight that they really could have survived without it and used the beat to engage on the next fight. Absolutely, you have that, that, you have that play, playoff pressure, right? It's overtime, you don't want to lose the point, and now one minute for this third point. One of the most difficult points in this game to capture. We're going to see how Chrysalis uh, take it on. You saw 3.5 just try to force Cart, and they managed to win it with ultimates. We'll see how Chrysalis take it on. So far, they're just controlling the high ground while Anu pushes the Cart. Yeah, with these, these is swapping over to the Torb, though. It is going to be really difficult for Lord here, as he is 75 to that blade, but it's going to be kind of hard to engage against the Torb turret. 3.5 rotating around. Are they going to give up this high ground? They actually do. Such a strange strategy here but this is actually going to provide uh chrysalis with a bit of an advantage here or at least even the playing field right and epoch just trying to contest this high ground um thesus has the turret uh, right through main doing as much as he can um lord falls though 96 to blade 15 seconds left on the clock warrior won the duel this is massive epoch drops ctw this might be another map for 3.5 Yep, with the, with the huge Molten Core and Coalescence on the point, DC has managed to clean up two, three. Lord coming back with the blade, but it doesn't matter, he's not going to be able to touch. Lord took an unfortunate 2v1 against the enemy Genji Mercy, paid for it with his life, and it kind of cost his team there. Absolutely. Uh... 3.5 with these unconventional compositions. What I always like to say, it, it doesn't matter as much, um what exactly you know the composition you're playing right a lot of the time it matters even more how well you play it you can play moira mercy if you play it really well you're going to win uh and that's what matters especially like you're talking when you've got players who can't really um at, at like the harmony tier level they're not getting the full value out of every hero mercy can look extremely strong right like you throw a gm mercy player into a harmony tier game they're going to do excellent like it's not it's not even as much down to the heroes it's down to um just how well you can play your composition as a team yeah definitely and i think honestly these unconventional compositions from 3.5 kind of catching chrysalis off guard a little bit they seem like they're unprepared for the stuff that 3.5 is going to run because a lot of teams aren't scrimming with Mercy, so this might... These Mercy compositions from 3.5 might be catching Chrysalis off guard enough that, you know, they're kind of just not really sure how to respond to it, it feels like. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's very difficult in a tournament setting. Like, if, if you're met with something new to adapt on the spot, um, it's not easy. And you're talking about like cheese compositions, even if they aren't the best composition out there. Like I said, I mean, if there's a team that's really good at it and you, you haven't practiced playing against it as a team, that can throw you off. Like if you remember from stage one, London Spitfire threw out the Reinhardt in the middle of a Winston meta, team's going to deal with them. Right? I mean, they, they, they even blacklist them because they didn't want to play against, like, Reinhardt when they're playing against Winston in their next match. But then when you get the match day, London have the advantage. Yeah, Same kind it of looks, effect here. It looks like here for Chrysalis, they're going to select Coliseo. 
So, a nice little tight corridor push map here. This is where Chrysalis has the ability to even up the series here. And if not, Chrysalis' season is going to be over. It is do or die right now. Absolutely. Do or die. And this is honestly what I was expecting, right? Like, you talk about those open maps. I'm not sure, um, again, what, why Chrysalis went with uh, such an open map like Circuit Royale. Um, I mean, when your other options the, are Junker Town and Dorado, sure. pick your poison. Dorado, though. Dorado can, if you play it correctly, you can run some different things. But um, uh, Dorado... Dorado first and second, very high ground oriented for the defense. Yeah. Kind of difficult. We are going to see Missilus come back in for. Er. Yeah. Missilus yeah. is in. Cherub is in. Mr. Cherub Box is, in. is out. All right. Um, and then on the side of 3.5, they are leaving Epoch in, it looks like. Axum will stay out. Yeah, there's always the possibility of running a Sigma-based composition, or Epoch will like stay with. Uh, we'll see what Epoch goes with, but we saw the Sigma pretty consistently from uh, 3.5 throughout the last map, and they were very successful with it, right? And very strong with it, living surprisingly long considering that um, Chrysalis were on the Zarya, right? You have that much pressure. The fact that he's living means a lot. Uh, and now we're going on to push, and here. It's definitely going to be uh, Anu. It's it, This is up to Anu on the Lucio to make the difference. Because 3.5 clearly don't have Lucio as an option. And if you don't Wait. have Lucio as an option on a push map, the other Lucio, that's your time to shine. Yeah, definitely. 3.5 might be at a disadvantage here running the Mercy. But, you know, we've said that all series. And, yep, here we are with them having a 2-1 lead. All right, we'll see what each team comes out on in five seconds here. I'm expecting possibly just a Zarya-based composition from both teams. Maybe, again, the Sigma. Uh, Epoch looking at the D.Va and maybe this Moira Mercy again. Uh, Warrior still on the Genji, which is unsurprising. And then this is exactly what I expected from Chrysalis. You've got Cherub on the Zarya. You've got Lord on the Sojourn and C CTW on the Baptiste and Anu on that Lucio, right? This is where Chrysalis have to make their stand, because if they can bring 3.5 to control, that is their chance to win this match. Yeah. Well, to get to control, first they gotta win this map, so we're gonna... We're gonna roll out here, and we're gonna see how they manage to take this. Push is all about, you know, controlling the ebb and flow of the game. You gotta know when to go aggro and when to back off, and this is gonna be interesting to see how both teams manage it. As Absolutely. Lord takes the first pick on the Thesis. What a shot. Cherub now pushing up, trying to capitalize on that pick and looks like 3.5 are gonna have to give this first fight the bot unlocks and anu pushes it along missilist looks for the pick on the coco coco doesn't die though coco never dies and now people looking for an opportunity going in uh 3.5 looking for anything uh the disrupt from both teams not really finding anything oh and we have a oh. server error that is interesting uh well Luckily, it was at the very beginning of the map, so... Aaron Keller uh, doing us good here. Yeah, I'm glad it was at the very beginning of the map, but we are going to go into a pause while we work to figure this out. Alrighty. <laughs> Okay, 
both teams are good sports today. Uh, don't mind uh, Aaron giving us a bit of a reset on the map. <laughs> and uh, we're starting from square one. Um, I mean, I guess Chrysalis, uh, they took the first fight um, before the server reset. Oh, somebody's screen is still on lobby. Cherub's screen is still on lobby. That's... Oh, there we go. Okay, he's good. He, he just... Okay. And they just claim that they're dumb. Okay. Epoch is now uh, opting for the Zarya, and Thesus is on the Torbjorn. Our the one thing I don't like changes. about the, um, the server crash is now both teams have had a chance to look at what the other one wants to run here on push and adjust. Yeah, absolutely, and 3.5 are definitely making adjustments. We're going to see Lucio from 3.5. Lucio, Lu that's right. Lucio. L Lucio Mercy, though. Yeah, Interesting. Very low heal comp, but the ability to go in quickly. You're going to have to go in quickly because you are not going to be able to sustain as long as the Lucio back comp. For sure, Epoch needs to be careful. Already falling to half. He's won. And, well, that's that's what you get with Mercy, Lucio. And looks like Crystals are going to take this first fight for the second time. Yep. Restart, same result. Pushing the barricade. <laughs> yeah, and Highlight will immediately swap back to the Moira. I'm kind of curious why he started. Why? The oh, they threw on purpose. Okay. Threw on purpose. Ow. Okay. Well, still okay. though. Well, they gave the fight on purpose. Our bad. Uh, we're not aware. Uh, Miss list falling low, getting beamed. Desus takes down Lord. And we're back to square one, back to where we were before. Uh, Missilis takes down Coco, and that's that's bad. I mean, Coco, uh, it's not very common that Coco falls first. And uh, we're just going to look for any value here. Pushbot stopped in its tracks. Yeah, right now both teams are just kind of fighting around the, around the food truck there. Uh, picks are going in favor of Chrysalis, and they're going to get it moving a little more. As the Oh, Thesis doesn't manage to get out. And Highlight is getting staggered a little bit. Mitzla showing off the tech there, uh, taking down two at the very end of that fight. And now, no ultimates on the side of uh, 3.5, but CTW has this window, right? And Missilist also has this blade. If they commit these ultimates early, when there's no response from 3.5, it's going to be a bit of a roll. Yeah. And that does have the beat here, Epoch, only Warriors 79. The the, the blade from this list finds Warrior looking for another Thesus Falls on the Moira. Oh, the bubble from Epoch, though, keeps Jailai in the fight. And wow, Missless is going to fall. That bubble made the difference. Coco falls as well. This fight is close. Epoch finds two. The Grav comes through. Anu just barely gets the beat off. And Lord finds Epoch. Chrysalis just barely held on. But Lord falls too. The, the spawns are in the favor of 3.5, but Chrysalis, they still have two on the point. It's the Zarya Lucio. Yeah, the fight's just kind of going back and forth there. Right now, it is just the Zarya Lucio on point. And we've still got a long walk for quite a few people. Like, Sojourn's Ooh. walking back as Grav the comes grab. out. Mercy falls low. Nothing from that grab, though. It was a bit too early, right? You want to get those bubbles out before you grab. And Cherub is just punished in that open space. Lord finds one, though. Lord finds two. The window and the overclock combined. It's dangerous. Looking for Jagalite. Doesn't find it, though. Gets a little too aggressive. E Epoch finding uh, two, just pushing into that window. Um, maybe should have focused Epoch there, right? Yeah, maybe. Just maybe. But doesn't matter here. 3.5... Managing to get the win here on the bot. They're going to get it pushed the other way. But the forward spawns are still active right now for Chrysalis. So they're going to be able to take this fight before it even gets to half. This lead of 93 meters is very significant. Warrior has this blade now. It, it's possible. It's very possible for 3.5 to bring this back immediately with this fight. Anu has no beat, no response. Cherub finds Desus before the blade can come out at all. And the blade from Warrior, though, it's combined with Jailai's nade. Uh, Jailai uh, falls to Lord, though. And Warrior looking for anything else. That immortality from CTW is massive. Missilist is getting a little too aggressive, though. Missilist is punished. Very even fight so far. No ultimate still on the side. <laughs> Lord finds another. Coco falls. Lord, one after the other, taking him out. There's another. Warrior oh falls as well. Okay, Apoch Lord. Falls. <laughs> It's just Thesis, uh, Thesis now, and that's it. I mean, no, no fade, no escape. 
Cherub's gonna finish him off. Oh no, it's Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord just deals it. Lord, Lord wants every kill in the lobby. Lord just wants to rack up the final blows. He's got to inflate his stats a little bit. Absolutely, going going for the owl stat screen. <laughs> I will say, I will say, amazing job by Cherub. His bubble management there to be able to keep his team alive long enough to get the spawns back was huge. For sure. And Face is now on the Junkrat. Apox just taking all the space in the world. Doesn't have enough charge to really get the Nano. Uh, a ton of value out of that Nano yet. Now just getting enough. Uh, CTW lives the graph though. Warrior takes out Lord. Very back and forth fight. Warrior looking for anything. Uh, Coco gets the res on the Thesis though. Warrior just falls again. This fight is going back and forth, back and forth, but you have to remember 3.5 has the spawns. Mr. Mr. going into the skybox there to try and lift the beam. And so far, just <laughs> nothing's really happening with the immortality though. So it immediately falls. Thesis finds Anu. It's, it's just a slow fall for uh, Chrysalis. Yeah, the. F they will eventually fall, but look at Chrysalis's lead. Currently 101 meters up. This is massive. They're going to be able to take another fight right at half. But a, ma and a massive alt bank for Chrysalis here. Their alt economy is great compared to that of 3.5 right now. I mean, 3.5 has the tire coming up here. But how much are you really going to be able to do with the tire compared to the 5 alt of Chrysalis is what's going to determine this fight. This isn't gonna be a fight. Considering Chrysalis is old bank, this is gonna be a slaughter. Here it is. Missilus finds one, looking for two. Epoch's low. Going for the Ana though, finds a third. Lore finds Epoch, and well, Missilus goes in for that Ana kill and gets punished for it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Chrysalis is just gonna push through, although Missilus being missing might actually make a difference here. Yeah, the forward spawns are not active. Missilus is going to have a long walk. He is walking from the original spawn. Yeah, that's that's not great. It's gonna be up to CTW. <laughs> no, CTW falls to Junkrat spam, and that's gonna be it for uh, Chrysalis's push here. I mean, you can't really do anything, and they, they realize that uh, Chrysalis are out. You just cast or curse CTW. You're like, oh, it's up to CTW. Immediately dies. You just curse them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that window there just to try and buy time. Um, Anu does have the beat though for Warrior now. Thesis gets CTW. <laughs> what is this? What? That, Thesis. that is the power of the junk rat. Oh the no, another, another four. <laughs> finds four. Uh, the cracked junk rat here and 3.5 are going to take their first progress in this round. Three minutes left on the clock. Can they catch up with the 103 meter push that Chrysalis has on the board right now? Keep your eye on Thesis. On Thesis, look at where he's positioned. He is going on an adventure looking for this oh, tire in the, the back rav. line. There's he, the blade from Warrior. The beat he, does come out to counter it though. Whoa! And three, that's both and of tire. the supports. Anu and CTW fought on Thesis. And now Missilus just trying to get any value trade out the kills. Uh, Chrysalis, can they stop this? I mean, uh, Lord has control of the high ground, but Warrior has the mercy pocket from Coco. Trying to do anything, getting beamed. Uh, Chrysalis is just barely holding on, but the cart's still moving. Yeah, of course I was holding on. Well, they do still have that window in the overclock in the, in the bank. Oh, Thesis for it. currently oh. in. Thesis, Thesis went too far in, and he suffers his life for it. High lie. Gonna fall, and that is gonna be a reflip of the bot from Chrysalis after they finish up these kills. If they finish oh, up these kills, Chilai's the high back, lie. Though. Yeah. Maybe a nade. The nade goes on to uh, Cherub, but nothing more. Uh, Missilus finds Coco. Lord finds Jailai. Warrior finds two, though. C2W and Lord down. This is still winnable. Uh, Epoch has the nano. Is this still doable? Yes. Uh, I don't think so, Ch though. Cherub get on the kill. Kill on Warrior. Missilus is there as Epoch is going to have to jump off. A great fight to take the bot back as we reach the minute and a half mark. Absolutely, 64 meters for 3.5, but still very shy of the 103 meters that uh, Chrysalis currently have. And now the cart's already on the other side of the map. CTW has this window. Probably shouldn't die to the junk spam here. No ultimates at all for 3.5. Uh, Missile is probably going to look for an early opening. Um, because this fight is going to be very easy to secure with a solid blade, right? And if you bubble it, what are 3.5 going to do? And here it is, here's the blade. Bubble comes out, Coco dodges again. After Jailai now, just has to back off. The beam comes through from Epoch and Missilist falls. 
Missiles got a little turned around there looking for Coco. Coco manages to put the moves on and just completely dodge that blade and negate it. But Thesis taking the rail shot does manage to die as Lord gets another one before being traded for CTW is traded out. This is all valuable time that 3.5 need, and here's the blade as well. Anu's down, Lord's down, but man, this is not looking good, right? 64 meters compared to 103 meters, that's about, I'd say, 40 meters of push that uh, 3.5 need, on top of the fact that they still need to get the push bot, uh, push bot back to the barrier, right? So Cherub has this grav, uh, uh, Epoch has the grav, Epoch just has to get the grav off first. Yeah, look at where Jailai is, though. They are walking back from the original spawn. Oh. They only have the Mercy Heals up there for this fight. And Graviton no, Surge is online for Cherub. Yeah, Epoch looking for anything. The Grav, though. Coco's caught in it in the Valk. That is going to possibly be it. Lord finds Stasis. Unfortunately, the Junkrat carry did not come in clutch. Uh, that fight... Uh, what? Okay. Okay. Well, uh, that, that's, that's just, that's that's a just server the error, but... That's that's um, that's a win. The map was the map was over. Chrysalis had actually won it right there. Yeah, that there that's that's a win for Chrysalis that. for sure. Yeah. All okay. right. Yeah, that definitely Chrysalis was forty meters up on the bot progress and had just finished the wipe. All that was left to do was for the overtime to bleed down. So. Yeah, that absolutely. should be Chrysalis victory. We're going to yeah, see what these teams have to say. Gizmo uh, made the call. It looks like it's going to map five. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Gonna, they, they may argue over this, um, but it seemed like a relatively definitive win uh, for Chrysalis, and we may possibly be going to a map five. Um, but. Yeah, okay. On that note, we're going to take a little bit of a short break while we figure out these technical issues. Please stick around and we'll be back as soon as possible. Left to do was for the overtime to bleed down as the server died. Yeah, no, that's that's the. That, I mean, either way, I mean, the server reset twice. Chrysalis had to rewin. Uh, I mean, they threw the fight, but like that that that's basically a near impossible fight to win. Uh, no, like I don't think it was I, no I think, winning. Everybody was yeah, dead. I think the only one left was Anna, and Anna was coming back from spawn if you remember. But that's it. Well, Anna's on Chrysalis. Chrysalis had won the fight. All right, ladies and gentlemen of Tranquility, we are back. So after a discussion between the teams, they did decide that the map will be a Chrysalis W, as Chrysalis had won the last fight and had a massive 40 meter lead, and overtime had just yet to burn down. That's going to be a Chrysalis win on map four, and we are going to map five. All right, and what we saw there, Anu making the difference on the Lucio, it seems like a difference of ult rotation, right? Um, it's very difficult for 3.5 to deal with blades or overclocks or anything else um just because 
you really all you have if you have the Zarya, I mean, you have bubbles and that's it. You, like you have to really work around that. Um, you have to use different tools other than ultimates that just negate it completely uh, to try and deal with those ultimates, right? So that's what we saw. That's in 3.5 started to get a bit of a foot in the ground, but it was already too late. Yeah, there is such thing as too little, too late, and that's kind of what we just experienced during that last map. I mean, 3.5 managed to make it actually more competitive than I thought it was going to be based off the massive lead from Chrysalis at the beginning of the map. I mean, they were up almost 100 meters to zero, so having 3.5 being able to actually make it competitive is big on its own from 3.5, and they can be... They should be happy with the way that map is. And even if they're not, they need to get over it and focus on map 5 because it all comes down to map 5. Winner goes up, winner moves on, loser is done. Absolutely. This is going to be either Oasis or Ilios here for this fifth map. Uh, and I think sections of each of these maps kind of um, give provide an advantage to different teams. Like you're talking something like Oasis um the the kind of more open city center that's gonna maybe play into 3.5's favor but on the other hand um you're talking university the lucio and the zarya and all of that from chrysalis is going to be dominant so it's going to be interesting and then you also talk Ilo ilios like lighthouse has a lot of high ground but it also it can also be really closed runes can be really open it's all over the place yeah where's ilios here on on um well well, well as well, there's about a thousand different angles that you can take on that. On ruins, very good for snipers, very good for poke. You know, it's kind of a big, wide open map. Definitely that, plays for Coco's Mercy. Yeah, and... Okay, so right. for... So we're going to Ilios, and it looks like we're going to see a lot of subs here for 3.5 as... Axum is going to come in. Um, Monotone is coming back in. We haven't seen Monotone in a while. Warrior's going to come in. Have we seen Warrior at all this series? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Warrior then, was very dominant and then, on Sojourn, I believe. Yeah, and then Thesis will go back to flex support here. All as right. Highlight comes out. For sure. And we saw Axum in those first two maps um, on the side of 3.5 and... Axum's very strong in that Zarya, um, but also the Winston, right? And you're, you're, you're talking Ilios, very, very strong um, Winston map. Maybe on Lighthouse, where you have kind of the two high grounds, um, where you, you can just apply so much pressure to the opposing Sojourn or Baptiste or Ana or whatever. And um, you, all, you also have Well, right? And that's also a, quite a good Winston map, but maybe the Zarya as well. Yeah, definitely able to run the Zarya here on some of the map for Ilya, but you can also see your way into making a monkey work on a couple of these points too. Axum definitely favors the monkeys, so it'll be interesting to see what he chooses to run here for 3.5, whereas on the side of Chrysalis, uh, Cherub, we've seen that they do kind of like that Zarya comp, but have shown the ability to run D.Va at a somewhat decent level. For sure, and for those who have only tuned in now, uh, the previous control map between these two teams, it was very decisive in Chrysalis's favor with a 2-0 on Nepal. Uh, throughout the entire map, 3.5 only managed to win two maps. Uh, two fights, sorry. <laughs> uh, not two maps, that'd be very worrying. Anyways, uh, we're going to be starting this on well, which pretty much anything goes on well. Yeah. Well is just... It's one of the most interesting points for me of oh, control no. simply because there's the <laughs> giant pit in the middle that you have to play around axum if you come out on this roadhog i will curse you and your family for generations do not do this to me all right what we might be seeing here is the roadhog being pulled out in competitive play <laughs> uh on well alongside monotone's Farah. I don't know if this composition from, uh, like... Uh, he's coming out! Chrysalis. Oh, he's coming out on the Roadhog! And also a Lucio uh, uh, from 3.5, which is not common. Yeah, Thesis going to the Lucio. So they're going to elect, elect for a Lucio Mercy. Thesis probably mainly going to be speeding Axum around, trying to get him in. Oh, the Lord! Lord just barely lived. How is Lord alive? 
Lord should not be alive there, but I think a couple of the pellets from Axum doesn't manage to connect. As Cherub gets pulled in, but obviously has that flight to get out. We're seeing a similar effect to Eichenwald first point here. Uh, there's just so much pressure on the side of 3.5, but Missilist takes down Thesus and all of a sudden 3.5 just back off. They decide to give it, and that's a smart decision. Yeah, as the first cap goes to Chrysalis here, we're looking at the alt economy. Currently, nothing really close to being online except for that nano boost from CTW, which is about 60% away. Um, CTW is going to be crucial here for shutting down Axum on that Roadhog. Thesus on this Moira again seems like um, maybe a bit of a comfort pick from this team in general. Monotone uh, finds CTW though. That's no nano boost. And Chirub falls as well. All the dominoes are falling now for Chrysalis. This might be a very close map. Lord finds Monotone, though, with the headshot railgun. Uh, Thesis just barely makes it out. Uh, living by a thread, trying to take out Lord. DPS Moira in the back line. Lord takes out Thesis, though. So this is Lord not looking good. Lord was 1 HP until he got that mini and managed to use it to turn the fight. Yeah, Chair is now. literally 1. Coco is down. No mercy for the Pharah. Monotone falls right after him. <laughs> Chrysalis. Some of these fights you are just barely winning. Yeah, Chrysalis dragging some of these fights oh, the back from the brink of oblivion what an and anti. somehow managing to win it. The anti there is huge from CTW on yeah. Axum. Yeah, we, we've, we've seen these pretty consistently. Um, throughout the match, CTW on the Ana and, and even the Baptiste really just a roll star in general. Very strong. And now Monotone has this... Uh, Barrage, you have the blade from Warrior, you have so many things. Anu actually doesn't have beat yet though, right? Yeah. Both teams have so many ultimates, but if Warrior can get this blade off in time, there's nothing to deal with it. Big nade there on the thesis. The barrage, maybe. Blade coming out Here's here. Here's the blade. It's early enough. CTW falls. There's no sound barrier at all. Missiles just barely holding on Missiles falls. That is perfect timing. Anu was 94 to the sound barrier. Yeah, this that point is going to be at 99% when they flip. And now it is 99 to 0. There is no room for error for 3.5 anymore. CTW now has this nano, and there's the blade with Mislist as well. This is going to be a very, very close fight. It's going to be up to Monotone to trade out these kills or do something, and Thesus and Coco have to live. Wait, the far is wait is way deep in the oh, back line. Goes for the it finds Lord, Lord, but it's traded out immediately by Missilist. And Cherub gets hooked. Cherub lives though. The blade may be coming out soon. There's a nano blade right onto the call. The call didn't stand a chance. Thesus just gets ripped apart. And now <laughs> Warrior trying to get out of there with the deflect, trying to live, doesn't manage to. Monotone's actually back in the fight, but the, was Monotone slept out of the air? Yeah, CTW hitting a mid-air sleep. I thought Monotone was actually going to fall into the well there. A massive play from CTW as they flip. Overtime is going to bleed down as Thesis does get the touch, but is quickly sent out by Missilis. Yeah, and Chrysalis, they win that with a beat to spare. The beat being dropped by Anu at the very last second. We see our first bit of gear go, CTW, logging it at the very end for fun. Um... CTW, that. why you got why you gotta do this to me? I've been wanting to see Kuriko <laughs> for the last yeah. two hours, and you, you do it <laughs> for two seconds. Come on, why you gotta yeah. do this to me? Kuriko is so much fun to watch, uh, for sure. So, so far this Fera composition, it just isn't enough for 3.5. Are they gonna make a change last second, or are they just gonna fight this point how it is? I mean, this is a decent map for Fera, but also it's a super strong map for Diva too, right? Like Cherub just constantly showing dominance, constantly able to eat these barrages, and anytime Monotone tries to go for it, just gets punished for it. And is this a Brig Mercy with a Zarya here? Yeah, Brig Mercy interesting thing. Um That's about the that's about the nicest way I can describe it. Yeah. I am not, I am not gonna pull into veto here and I'm gonna try to be a little nice. Alright, Monotone gets cut out didn't realize that Coco wasn't really there, and that is going to unfortunately set a bit of a precedent for this entire round. Uh, winner of first fight, obviously, honestly, like it makes such a massive difference, and this is looking really, really good for Chrysalis, right? Um, and that's going to be the first fight win. Uh, very definitive. Yeah, this is here on the on the brig. You know, you're not really going to be able to 
sustain your team here. Like, Thesis, if you get dove here by Chrysalis, especially if you get anti'd and Axum doesn't have a bubble for you, you're just dead. I hope you enjoy, I hope you had a good life because you're going back to the spawn room. Absolutely, and the CTW just rapidly building this nano. Uh, and uh, Cherub just barely getting in as well. Looks like uh, 3 4, 5 are actually going to be able to take a bit of space here. They're actually going to be able to get in. Warrior goes for a dash through. Doesn't really find anything yet. Monotone's close to the barrage, but Cherub just punishes immediately. Warrior finds Lord, though. Cherub's mech is also gone. Axum is full charge, just beaming. Looking for Cherub. Cherub is going into a circle. <laughs> barely Cherub's escapes the beam of death. And Warrior's still on the point. Ch uh, Axum's still there. And this is what we saw previously, right? Like, once Axum gets this charge, and now uh, Thesis is actually able to proc Inspire. The Brigitte is able to get a little bit of value. The Zarya is able to get a lot of value. Cherub falls now. And Missilus falls right behind it. The full charge Zarya doing all the work. Yeah, the high charge Zarya there from Axum doing so much damage. Just the constant pressure that it's putting on Chrysalis there. Forcing them to have to pretty much run around in a circle to try to survive. In the end, it's pretty much futile. Axum has built up his Graviton Surge off of this. We're going to see four alts on the side of 3.5 here. Absolutely, maybe even five. I mean, everything is almost online. Nanoblade is close to online, though, on the side of Chrysalis. Again, very close fight. Very important fight. It... 3.5 really need to win this if they want to win this match, right? Yeah, every fight every fight counts when you're fighting for your lives in the playoffs. Cherub! Oh, Cherub goes low! Anu now has the beat, though. Miss List. Lord. All of them oh. just in this room. Miss List. Oh, Miss List! Doesn't get the wall climb! Warrior punishes, dashes through. He's in. Deflects. Manages to get out. Has this blade. 40% now. It's almost even. And Chrysalis just haven't made any progress with this push yet. No ultimates committed. Five ults in the bank now. Yeah, five ults in the bank here from 3.5. This is looking oh, really Thesis, good. Thesis, Thesis, Wait, Thesis ten ults are on the board. They just have to live. Oh, Coco uses the Valk. Gets <laughs> blinded. Oh, look at, look at the sleep on Warrior. Look at where Warrior is. He's sleeping up top on that little lattice. Incredible. All right. Chrysalis right. finally get a little bit of purchase, get a little bit of value, and Missilus finishes out Warrior, and that's going to be the cap, but, I mean, 3.5 are actually in the lead right now. This is actually doable. It's a very close fight between both teams. Rally Blade can come out on the side of uh, 3.5, and, I mean, th there's no Blade from Ananu. Yeah, watch the overclock here, though, from Lord. Lord has been getting tremendous value out of the OC, and there's not really a ton of sustain to be able to kill people up if they, they start getting low. Here's the rally. Anu's just uh, looking for anything, trying to live. Oh, the sleep! The sleep from CTW doesn't get anything. Uh, Monotone finds Missilist. Lord, though, gets Thesus first. Uh, CTW just barely holding on, trying to keep uh, Cherub in the fight. The bomb comes through. Oh, the baby diva! Genji falls. There, there it is. 99% 99, 99 here from Crystalis. All that's left is the cleanup. 3.5. This might be it. Point going down. And that's it. Crystalis will take this match. 3 to 2. Yep. Crystalis looked really good on control in this series, both on this map. And on, what did we play before? I'm drawing, Li Zhang. Okay, I'm just drawing a complete blank. This is what happens when you wake up at 5 a.m. every Nepal. day. No, it was, it was Nepal. <laughs> okay, my, no, producer was not Li Zhang. my producer is telling me lies and getting me confused. No. <laughs> but overall, a nice back and forth series. Not what I expected after the first map from Chrysalis after they just came out and dominated. Yeah, it, again, these really, like, where Chrysalis can take these more kind of closed fights, although those maps really weren't entirely in um, Chrysalis's favor, they were close, right? Like, it, it was really a very even kind of matchup, and you saw at that very last map, like, I mean, 3.5 had a shot at it, um, but Chrysalis, they, they just played it very, very well. And yeah. every time there was a kill from 3.5, um, you would see Cherub trade or you see Lord trade. Um, there was always a trade coming through. Yeah, always one trade coming through. Very scrappy. Um, despite some server issues that we had early on, well, on 
Coliseo. The Overwatch gods that be did not want us to play Coliseo. So, but in the end, it didn't matter. Chrysalis won it, and they managed to come back from down one to two and take the win. Got to give credit to Chrysalis all around, but you got to give credit to the players with 3.5 too for what they were able to accomplish, keeping this series close when it mattered. But unfortunately, it was too little, too late, and their playoff run is done. Absolutely, yeah. It's just uh, great work from both teams. Um, good plays from both teams as well. And also, something I just realized, it seems like Thesus actually went from the Junkrat, uh, the DPS, like you saw on um, Coliseo, to Brigitte at the very end um, on Ilios. Uh, and th those Junkrat plays, I don't know how you pulled it off, but he pulled it off. And uh, Axum as well, very, very strong in the Zarya. And um, in those longer fights was absolutely dominant uh on, on the side of chrysalis ctw and cherub um and lord too like everybody really did an excellent job and played their role well uh ctw especially with the antis and um being able to like live it it, it was just a, a very very good performance yeah not a bad thing to say about any of these players they all played their hearts out but unfortunately for 3.5, their run ends here as Chrysalis will be moving on to play Ace High. All right. And, all right. Um, I don't have anything else to add. Do you? Not at all. Thank you, everyone, right. for tuning in. Yep. Thank you for joining us and joining us tomorrow night for Transcendence Tier.